Welcome to It Takes Two. I'm Blair. I'm Chris. And today we'll be talking about Married at First Sight After Party Season 18, Episode 5. Listen, I need y'all to subscribe, like, share, comment, all the above. Blair, you ready to get through this after party? I feel like this after party was a good after party. Now, I will say, it's kind of hard to watch 14 hours of Married at First Sight and then going to another 13 hours of the after party. <laughs> but guess what? At the end of the day, we are going to serve y'all the after party. Now, shout out to everybody here who said that they do not get the after party where they're from. But we're going to do our best to try to give you our best review and recap of the after party. I tried to I tried to I tried to do my thing. You did your thing. OK, you ready? <clears throat> yeah, let's go. We see the clip of David and Madison at the gym. Yeah. Alan says the first night was an extreme difference as far as his chemistry with Madison from the wedding night. Mm -hmm. Little gestures were refuted the first night when everyone was at the resort and hanging out together. She asked, um, he asked her what was going on. You know, they ended up having a talk and mm -hmm. he learned some of her issues were superficial. Okay. The, then they talk about the last after party when Carla revealed that Alan was kind of staring at Madison intently. Yeah. And Alex explains, I mean, Alan explains that there were three women dancing in front of him. Mm -hmm. He thought it would be disrespectful to stay there and keep looking at their booties. Yeah. <laughs> so he got up and I think he was ready to leave as well. He just felt like it would be disrespectful if he stayed there. Mm -hmm. Carla's perspective was different. And she also was hearing Madison venting. Madison was feeling overwhelmed at the moment. Mm -hmm. Carla thought he was going to the room but he had a strong look on his face um alan says it's kind of cringy that you would think that i was being a weirdo i guess when dealing with madison mm, stop right there mm -hmm. i believe everything carla said about this right here okay because what when alan was giving his description i was like that don't that don't even make no sense mm -hmm. in my opinion and and that don't even address what carla was even saying no not really so and then when carla was when Carla talked after Alan of his explanation of there was three girls in front of me and I ain't want to like be disrespectful. Carla did everything in her power where she succeeded in not calling him a liar. Yeah. She basically was like, Oh, that's an interesting perspective. I mean, it's yours so you can have it, but mm -hmm. like, Oh yeah, by the way, your wife was venting. Yeah. And so it's like, Alan definitely don't have the, um, the POV that Carla had of Madison and just of the whole thing. I think he's trying to hide something. Also, <laughs> This kind of answered what Blair just said about remember the conversation where they was in the bed a couple episodes ago where uh, he was like, I don't know if I should hold your hand. I don't know if I should do this. It was refuted. Yeah. Right. So there was some actions or there was some things he probably did that that like she probably like, uh, uh you get what yeah. I'm saying? That made him hesitant to basically take the lead. You get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Because she told us that many times you ain't my type. I don't like you like that. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Now, David talks about how the conversation with Madison helped to just give him a different perspective mm -hmm. and actually gave him hope for his marriage. Alan mm. says that regarding Madison's recommendation for David, mm -hmm. he says Madison is just a direct person. And Keisha said that maybe that's advice that she would have wanted, but maybe it wouldn't be the best thing for Michelle because she's a different person. Mm -hmm. Carla thinks that they probably should have held off on the heavy conversations. What are your thoughts? Um... I totally agree. I, I think that Madison and Alan just were not vibing. Neither was David and Michelle. True. But at the same time, I don't necessarily think it was Madison's place to give advice because you don't know anybody here. Mm -hmm. No one. <laughs> so I guess you, but the thing is like I, even Alan chimed in and was just like, well, maybe that is something that she wanted for herself and was just projecting that onto David and Michelle. Mm -hmm. Now this, there's, there's Carla said maybe they should have held back on heavy convos. And I'm like, well, that would work if the other person was a participant in the process. There's no conversation Michelle wanted to have with David, period. At all. Not one. Not one. To like the point where he asked about her family and she's like, That's my business. Mm -hmm. Like 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 you don't need you don't need to know. You yeah. I'm like, Wow, okay, let's keep going. So we see the clip of Madison talking to Alan when she gets back from the gym mm -hmm. and her telling him that she wanted him to focus on himself and that she considers him a caregiver, not mm -hmm. necessarily a pushover. Alan confirms that he is a caretaker. He is a support system for his family, but he's not used to receiving that in return. Mm. The way that Keisha saw it is that maybe Madison isn't used to being treated with this level of kindness and care. I don't know about that. Carla says that it goes to the attraction not being there. She sees how attentive and thoughtful that he is and a lot of women desire that but madison just isn't open to receiving it 
because she's not attractive. Carla didn't say that mm-hmm. because uh, he's not attractive. Carla didn't say that, but it, but that's pretty much what she's saying. If if you don't like how he looks, it kind of don't matter what he does. No, don't matter what he does. Listen, Carla, Carla doing a good job. Yeah. so far. David says that Alan is a genuine guy, and it's just great that him and Madison are communicating about their issues. I'll give David this. They're doing better with, than y'all <laughs> as far as communication, but the communication they're doing isn't really pushing them in any direction. Mm. So I don't know if it's effective communication, but they are talking. I'll give you that much. Uh, that's the perfect way to say it. <laughs> we just, we just making sounds with our mouth. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? That, that's basically what they're doing. It's not effective. It's not progressive. We just opening our mouth and hello. You yep. get what I'm saying? That's basically it. I like that. David and Michelle, uh, we see this clip of when she was saying that he's living in a fantasy land Mm -hmm. because he's thinking that everything is fine. Keisha was upset for David because how else is he supposed to get to know her if he doesn't ask her questions? Yeah. David was confused and in shock with her response. Mm. Carla's jaw was on the floor when she saw it happen. Yeah. She thought that David handled it gracefully and she probably would have called Michelle out of her name and walked out. Mm. Keisha asked, how is this communication david different from how you and michelle communicate when the cameras are not there and david says without the cameras there's no communication wow. we're in different rooms there is no talking it's not right there so do that kind of make it seem like production is making them talk yeah because otherwise what are we filming y'all for mm. to be sitting in different rooms the whole time mm-hmm. and also another question or maybe statement that kind of come off as a question carla is not a girl's girl right i disagree do no i how so i think that you can be a girl's girl and you can also be on the side of right oh i don't know because i consider myself a girl's girl but i'm not going to be a girl's girl to michelle and other girls wouldn't <laughs> and other girls wouldn't consider you a girl's girl then well well then in my definition of a girl's girl i think carla is because i think that she's there for the ladies and she is a support system to them i don't think she's catty in any type of way but if something is wrong or jacked up she's Mm -hmm. gonna call it out i just i think that she's a genuine person well well it's for the girls to say that you're a girl's girl if carla's gonna say that i you can't be a girl's girl to michelle i'm sorry if carla's gonna say i would have called her a b and walked out that tells me a lot about the relationship that I believe that she probably have with Michelle and probably what a lot of people have with Michelle because number one, a lot of them, as we're going to see was surprised by Mm -hmm. how Michelle and David interactions was going in the first place, which lets me know if y'all watch the review, whatever Michelle said that David was doing or how they was talking, it did not match to what they saw. No, you get what I'm saying? So that's why I'm like there. When I say girls, girls, I'm not talking about to the extreme of last season where we all go wear pink, we all go be us versus them. But in that moment, Carla did not have to say, I would have called her a B walked out. I'm like, oh, that kind of lets me know, like, oh, maybe Michelle's been lying. Maybe maybe put a little sauce on it to make you go like, yeah, I really can't defend you or even like be on your side with this. And guess what? You could be honest, but I don't think a lot of people will call you a girl's girl in that in that matter. You let us know. Uh, Who, call- me? No, oh, I'm about, our audience. I'm about, I'm about to say, I we just talked. We are the only ones here. I just say, I just talked. <laughs> Go ahead. Carla and Juan talk about finances. I'm about to say, like, like I literally just got done talking. I'm talking to them. Oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. I got, I got caught up in the. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Carla and Juan talk about their finances and how she's pretty much going to be going a lot of places alone. Mm-hmm. Carla can. Uh, empathize with him because she is an entrepreneur so she understands sometimes you just don't have the money yeah she doesn't have high expectations and she does just want love primarily okay keisha asked her because you are a pretty girl do you ever get the judgment that you want to be taken care of financially Mm -hmm. carla does not pay attention to what people say about her she knows herself she knows her work ethic she has been working and pretty much been independent since she was 16 years old Mm -hmm. and she had very humble beginnings Mm -hmm. her family is very generous with people they love her parents were generous with her Mm -hmm. and their family generous with their other family members or friends so that is who she is okay Alan says that he also had a humble upbringing. He is frugal in his day to day before his car. He'll spend some money on it. Mm. See, the thing I have a problem with Juan is that like knowing what he does in the sense of putting money into this app, which he even described it as a money pit, which I know personally is a money pit. He's broke. There's there's a difference between like him being an entrepreneur and and like 
not only is he broke, he have a job that really depends on his performance. So it's not like he has a constant flow of money coming in because he works in sales. Mm -hmm. So he's basically getting his money probably all at one time, depending on his performance. And that's why it's something as simple as, hey, when you go somewhere, I probably won't be going. That's kind of putting a lot on a new marriage to where you're kind of like, hey, we supposed to be doing things together. There's one thing to where you're telling me, OK, don't get carriage juice every day. It's one thing if you're telling me don't splurge on this. But now you're telling me if I go somewhere, I have to go by myself. Yeah. Like that's something new and something harsh. Well, not let me not say harsh, but that's a lot to take in for a newlywed couple. You yeah. get what I'm saying? David talks about how he likes to have a good time. He mm -hmm. enjoys spending money. He likes sharing his money. He will tip well and buy rounds of shots for folks. He also takes care of business when it comes to bills. Well, you live. Sorry. Like, okay. like, like of course, you go buy the shots for everybody. You got two jobs and you live in your parents' basement. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So it's it is what it is. Listen. The writing's on the wall, David. Okay. Carla talked about the magic stick on the bus. Yeah. Alan thinks that what she said was true, that sex is intimate and you need to be intentional about who you decide to do it with. Mm -hmm. Carla says that the conversation they were having on the bus, they were already talking about sex and they were talking about it very freely. Okay. But she just wanted to remind them to be conscious that it is an energy exchange and to not take it lightly. So they do the do over section and ask mm -hmm. Carla if there was anything she would have done different in that segment. And she said, nope. Okay. Y'all need to know what I said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I said, you know what, Carla? You ain't wrong. She ain't wrong. We move on to M.M., Madison, and Thomas, mm -hmm. who are now on the couches. Yeah. We see Thomas tell Camille about how he found out he was adopted at 30 and ha that his dad passed shortly after that. Mm -hmm. His dad was very important to him, and he would not be who he is without his dad. And M.M. starts to tear up as well because, as we know, she lost her father recently, too. And also, in the show, she was tearing up a lot. She, well, not tearing up. She cried. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? In the actual episode when she was talking about her father, because she's talking about how really there wasn't that much affection when it came to her and her mom and things like that. She didn't really grow up like that. But now losing her father and the little time that she did have with him, it, it did touch her and things like that. And Keisha asked Thomas, how did your mom end up posting online that y'all were adopted? Did she just like not? pay attention or did it slip her mind mm -hmm. and thomas explained that his dad's ex-wife posted it mm. not the woman who raised him he grew up thinking that the ex-wife was his mom because it was his dad's first marriage mm -hmm. and also he resembles his dad a lot so he never questioned whether or not he was adopted okay we get into Ikechi and M.M. talking about how M.M. had to hold on to her emotions because her family wasn't very emotional. M.M. Mm -hmm. tells us that she's realizing that she never had a chance to be emotional. She lived in a traditional Nigerian household where there were no no tears, no I love yous. Mm -hmm. But her parents showered her with love by providing for her and exposing her to a life that they never even thought was possible. Okay. M.M. felt peace and understanding when her father transitioned when he finally said I love you to her mm -hmm. Madison says it's beautiful that it that they can share these moments with their spouses and these experiences because it's something that will bring them together what is your thoughts if if you have any no thoughts really I, I feel like these are the conversations that you have with your partner things that are important in your life mm -hmm. things that probably help shape you into the person that you are and that help you navigate situations so i think that thomas and camille are having the necessary conversations i think mm she is recognizing how her uh, just basically how she's growing up has affected her and is to the person she is today her upbringing yeah right her upbringing and how there's probably positives and negatives in that mm -hmm. but i don't know if it's going to matter much in dealing with Ikechi, but I think that she'll have a lot of self growth. Wow. <laughs> wow. Ikechi didn't even do nothing this segment. He ain't even here. <laughs> Alan is talking to Madison about how he has his own aesthetic, his own look. That's mm -hmm. when they were on the paddle boats talking about how he had on like lime green glasses, watermelon print mm -hmm. uh, shorts and some type of shirt or whatever. And Madison says that every dinner he was always wearing orange tank tops, fruit and veggie pants. She's just having a hard time adjusting to his style. Mm. She respects that he knows who he is. She doesn't want to change the important parts of him, but she wants to be honest about how she feels. And what is that honesty? She not like she's not liking it. I ain't gonna hold you. You ain't got no regular pants. Mm. How come how come you got veggie tail pants on now? Mm-hmm. 
because it, it, it's not helping it, it's not helping you um let's let's keep going Keisha says if you would take those things out and really connect to his heart you guys would be the perfect match stop Keisha I understand you are great hosts and things like that but Keisha is is stop it now let's 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 I understand the premise of the show right to look past the aesthetics to look past what we see externally and things of that nature, right? But come on, man. The man got watermelon shorts on. The it, it just and here's the thing about it. The thing that she's asking Michelle to do with David, Madison is doing with Alan. She's asking for Michelle to show at least some decency and treat David like a human being and just like talk to him, be nice to him. Madison's being nice to, to Alan, but it's still very clear that hey you're not my person um and i'm just being nice and i think keisha in, in this moment i don't think they will be a perfect match <laughs> i don't think they are a perfect match the fact that she told him already four times in four days that you're not my type and now we are actually i'm now nitpicking something as simple as clothes with you i no 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 no, no. i think madison have all the intentions to not to make sure that they don't match perfectly at all Madison says that it's not something that would make her not want to be with him, but mm. she wanted to share that with him. MM the loves life, seeing life Madison life. and Alan communicate, and Alan is taking what she's saying well. Okay. Madison is hopeful that attraction will grow with Alan. She wants to get out of her normal type because she realizes the pretty boys haven't done anything for her. That's not saying pretty boys. Pretty boys didn't want you. And that's what she said. Yeah, but but mm -hmm. but 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 I'm I'm happy you finally saying it. Yeah. But 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 you saying it on the the wedding day and the things of like I go after pretty boy. You shouldn't even said that knowing that you came on the show. Okay. Well, I I will say one thing in response to this segment. When it comes to Keisha telling Madison about really connecting to his heart, I I can understand where she's coming from i don't know if they'd be the perfect match but i do think that madison is doing a lot of what michelle's doing but in a nicer way her mm. wall is still up mm -hmm. she's not trying to genuinely connect with him mm -hmm. she is picking him apart and making judgments off of that mm -hmm. and that is impacting how much she wants to genuinely connect with him so even though i'm still talking to you it doesn't mean that i'm open to connection with that you. is true because the part to where if we go back and she says you should worry about yourself more that doesn't sound like somebody who says I want to learn about you and care yeah. about you and know about you it, it's the same thing in a different font if you ask me no 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 <laughs> it definitely is I think well like I said Keisha's job is to push the show and if everybody really f free fall into the experience of Married at First Sight they wouldn't be doing what, what Michelle is doing they wouldn't be doing what Madison is doing mm -hmm. you get what I'm saying they wouldn't be judging and nitpicking and, and to like your point of what you just said David and Michelle, we see their argument at the table and how Michelle was saying she was feeling smothered and telling him to leave her alone. Yeah. Keisha says it's clear that David has been trying. Okay. MM is shocked. It seemed that Michelle would be more personable, but she was actually pretty brutal and mean. Mm. Keisha says, you know, you can still speak to people with kindness, even if you're not romantically attracted to them. That is true. Thomas says that David cares a lot about people. He is trying to do the basic things like just checking in on her and he mm -hmm. has the best intentions and he kind of throws a little bit of shade towards Michelle that you need to know whether or not you need space or you need isolation. Like mm. what, what do you really want? He basically said you need to be put away <laughs> <laughs> basically. Okay. Madison is just shocked by the lack of questions that Michelle has for him. Mm -hmm. Michelle isn't trying to get to know him at all. What are your thoughts on, on, on them being shocked about Michelle? I think it is shocking. I think that Michelle around the group, just by the small clips that I see, yeah. she seems even killed and pretty chill. But around David, it's like she's a live wire and everything he says and does just is like static to her and she is freaking out yeah. and she cannot stand to be around him. So, yeah, I, I think that <laughs> it was awful how she treated him. Mm -hmm. But I'll also say that Madison, going back to my previous point, <laughs> there's no point in asking questions if Michelle doesn't like the man and she doesn't want to get to know him better. Mm -hmm. She's better off just telling him, you know what? This is not going to work. She's trying to push herself, but Michelle, know your limits. Yeah. <laughs> I think she needs to know her limits because I can't see her uh, extending and trying to be a different person or a better person. I think Michelle, you are who you are and um, it's time to accept it. <laughs> well, it's like what Carla said. Carla mm -hmm. said, 
when she was talking about um, Madison, I think she was talking about Madison. When the attraction is not there, there's nothing you can do. Right. You get what I'm saying? Now, I have a question. Can I ask my question? Yes. I said, can I ask my question? <laughs> yes. Okay. Did we overcorrect and now we made, uh, how can I say this? Did we overcorrect as a show and made David a sympathetic figure now? No. How so? Because I feel like David has a lot of red flags. I ha- I I feel like he is a walking red flag, in my opinion. Yeah, so I can see that he's a red flag, but Michelle still shouldn't treat him to the point where he feels like he has to sleep outside. You Mm. know, I I think that there's a middle ground where Michelle can be honest about the fact that this is not going to work. Yeah. But let's enjoy our honeymoon and have a great time. We Mm -hmm. can grab food and all this type of stuff. And I think that's where Michelle mindset needs to shift from and i think that's what her sister when she was talking to her sister on the phone yeah. and the sister was saying can you at least like try to be his friend like, can you just like mm-hmm. hang out with him or enjoy your vacation like, i don't hang out with people like this because <laughs> my thing is that yeah you might not think he's a romantic option for you mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean that he can't be somebody you enjoy a vacation with i mean sometimes you go to vacations you end up meeting people at the resort who are just friendly you know and you can yeah. hold conversations with so but i will say to you that michelle comes across as judgmental she is. so i can imagine to where you said she don't hang around people like that she probably don't Mm-mm. she probably is very specific about the people that she has close to her or people that she even speaks to mm. and i think that speaks to the fact that uh she she doesn't have uh, much humanity herself. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> she lacks humanity, she says. Let's keep going. Thomas is saying that he has reverted to being shy, but he is not going to do that anymore. This mm. is when he was talking to Camille on the boat, and yeah. Camille said that she would be fine if he walked by and slapped her booty. Mm. Thomas is blushing. He is blushing. He was surprised because he thought he was being a gentleman and doing things the right way. Yeah. He was trying to wait for her to give him more cues for him to continue to proceed. Mm-hmm. He wants to know um, her to know that he is trying to build a strong foundation and not just to get physical with her. I would give him a little bell to get him out of jail. We are married and I don't know you. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So, so we're not even dating. We're married. So a lot of things... I may need you to tell me straight up what to do because a lot of things you learn in dating and there's more like room to make mistakes, but we're married and there's a decision that's at the end of all these weeks. So let me know if I can smack your booty. Like you might need to tell me, Mm -hmm. you get what I'm saying? Besides giving me hints, you know, Mm -hmm. Madison is just saying that Camille is really excited. And a is saying that she spends time with Camille and Thomas. They had uh, a bite to eat before she got there Mm -hmm. and they bicker like, old married folks just about the most mundane things Mm -hmm. they say behind the scenes that Juan is having a really fun time he had his shirt off he was enjoying brunch and serenading waiters and that's pretty much where the after party ends up that is Mm -hmm. not behind the scenes we could tell on screen Juan is having a ball yeah he know all the songs he pulled out his guitar and I think Juan is just having the time of his life this was actually a good after party um so far I'm enjoying it. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment, all the above. We see you next time.